Hello awesome people. I hope you're having an amazing day today. Today we're taking a look at the book uh, The Lay of Atrio and Ethrium. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing them. They're Breton uh, people uh, that written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, this is a collection of this poem uh, which is about 25 pages in this oversized collection uh, and then also uh, two other poems uh, that were published as well by J.R.R. Tolkien uh, that definitely have a similar sort of a, a genre that were sort of published as a diptych uh, and then a lot of different, you know, deep dives into what the words choices were and uh, what the context of it is by a couple of different authors, including the editor, Verlin Flager. Uh, and therefore, you can take a look at sort of what's going on with these and do a deeper dive with them. Also in here are fragments and uh, pre preludes of the, of the, of the lay. Uh, it's for about a about, about fourth of the, of the size of the book. I didn't read that part. Uh, I only read the two poems and then the lay, uh, the epic poem that comes with this. It's about 25 pages long in this. I read this yesterday uh, while I was at the mall waiting to, uh, and on the way to the mall, and then on the way back home from the Arendelle Mall, small, near, nearby where I live uh, in Catonsville in, in Maryland. And I was, I was on my way there, which is about 15 minutes on my way back, 15 minutes I knocked it out on both, and, and then reading, a, reading lunch. Uh, so I knocked it out in about an hour uh, total for me to knock it out, uh, the poems and all the, the commentary uh, that's on them too, uh, and the context that's in them. It, but I didn't read the, 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 uh, the early stuff uh, I, that, that I did not read, um, but, you know, and, or, or the comments on that. So it's about 70 pages out of this book. I knocked out was pretty quick. Didn't take that much of my time. I thought about doing uh, the edits for this in two different ones. One for, one for the diptych poems and then one for the lay, uh, which is the, the, the title poem of this collection. Uh, but I decided not to do them. I, I would just go ahead and do them as one since it didn't take me that long for me to read them. And it's just those two poems. These were published in December, a journal of the Welsh Review in 1945. So they were published during Tolkien's time. A lot of things that, that were published, uh, a lot of things that he wrote uh, were not never published. Like the Cimmerillion was, was rejected by his publishers uh, prior to him submitting The Lord of the Rings. And then also you had his... Um, uh, his children's book uh, after after the recep receptions of the Hobbit was good. He, they said, "What do you have any other ch Hobbits uh, ho uh, stuff that are like this in, in the children's uh, sort of style of writing?" And he had Mr. Smile that he wrote, which was a children's book with the art that was done by him. That he submitted that was rejected. Uh, we, we've reviewed, read that for this show, and I've just recently done a, a review for that too. Uh, so we're doing a deeper dive in some some of these lost things, and a lot of these things were, were published after his publication. Um, and uh, and so, but these were published in 1945 in the Welsh uh, Review uh, in in December of 1945. Uh, so they were published uh, contemporaneously in his Middle Ages uh, after after some time uh, working, but not in, in that sort of middle period of his career uh, when he is going back and he's writing and a lot of rewritings uh, and those sorts of things. Um, so there are three poems then in this. The first, the, the lay and the last poem have a very similar sort of basic concept of what as to what's happening. Um, and then the middle poem is dealing with a changeling uh, that, that is found uh, as a baby uh, that has been replaced there by the fae. Uh, that is found out on like the first page. So you, in like the first or second, write uh, a few lines. Uh, so that's not a surprise that there's a changeling story in there for you folks for you. And then there is the first one and the third one. Their basic story that you'll find early on uh, is, is that there, there are our key person, Aotru, uh, is the, the our, our keen point of view character from the lay, uh, and he's married to Itrian, and uh, uh, they've been married for a while, and they have a nice life. Uh, he is the lord of, a, of an area uh, in Brittany, and then he had, but they haven't had any children to pass it on with. And that's a great sadness for him. So he seeks um, uh, a dark magic from a local witch, um, and uh, in in order to provide it, uh, and then the dark uh, consequences of his actions um, and finding this in the wrong places are going to come back and haunt him. And that's that's the key story, and that's also the key story that's happening. Although the names are different. Uh, in the third poem, too, uh, this idea of not having children uh, and wanting them, so seeking out uh, a witch uh, and then doing some darker things with that magic-wise uh, and then having to pay the consequences for that one later on. Although that one's like 
just very shortly. It's only a few pages long. So that one's actually pretty quick. You can knock these out during a lunch hour. Um, I'll link you to this collection um, in the comments below in case you're interested in checking it out and reading it. Obviously, J.R.R. Tolkien is a big name in the fantasy genre, uh, and these do have fantasy elements to them. Now, they're more mythic uh, than they are uh, traditional, you know, you know, epic fantasies like the things that he has, uh, but they're still... I still have that fantasy epics, st st epics uh, to them, so I'll go ahead and link you to this collection in the uh, comments below. I just recently picked this up on Amazon, doing a deeper dive into some of the things by him that I had never read. Uh, so, so I this is this is one of the last ones uh, by uh, that after that collection. Uh, I read the three sh things from the first stage, first channel, then Mister Smile, uh, and that were recently published, uh, and now this, uh, and then that's it. Pretty much, yeah. Like, I think I've got one more book coming up soon, uh, and that's it. We'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read the lay? Uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien or the other poems that are in here? If so, what'd you think about them? Uh, I'm not an expert in poetry, so I'm just going to give them. What do you give poetry? Uh, you know, I don't read a whole lot of poetry. I'm, I, it sometimes will come across my review, but it's pretty rare. Uh, so I'll give it a seven because it's J.R.R. Tolkien. Pro well, actually, probably more of a seven minus. Uh, the se second poem was very deliberative of the first one. Uh, it didn't really go to a whole lot of places, that, and the middle poem was pretty short. It didn't have a whole lot of deeper dives uh, into it. So probably more of a seven minus uh, out of ten, like a six point eight or six point seven. But it's fine. Uh, it, it works. It does. It's it's worth it's, it's worth your time. And if you're a Tolkien scholar, uh, it's it's nice. It's not it's not set in Middle Earth legendarium, but it's still it's still worth your time. So let me know what you thought about it in the comments below, or if you want to talk about spoilers. Uh, let's do so. If you enjoyed this video, hey, why not hit that subscribe button? There should be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.